You enter a stronghold, its age and steward uncertain. While clearly in disrepair, the remnants of the guard wander the halls, not as men, but as shambling thralls of singular purpose. Your strength has grown with each prior victory, but still you must remain alert, for the moment you relax will be the moment you are beset by all manner of trap and ambush. Caution is key in this place. If you take your time, check your surroundings, and properly leverage your abilities, you may well find success. As you wind your way through the structure, patterns become clear. Sharp and shadowed corners are an assassin's homestead. An open staircase is a path for some unspeakable, crushing barrage. Every path is an obstruction to and an opportunity against a would-be intruder such as yourself. And yet, it can be done. The castle has no room too deadly, no lure unavoidable, nothing that cannot be overcome. This place is conquerable, and you will conquer it, through perseverance and tenacity. But before you can reach your final test in the Minotaur of this maze, you are accosted by a threat of unknowable skill. The Invader. This blood-red phantom walks in an aura of death, darkened by the cruelty of their path, their purpose painfully clear. For you, the noble hero, this challenge is unprecedented. No measure of trial and error can solve this problem. You must pit yourself, head and heart, against a foe who is, for all intents and purposes, you. They have access to the same tools, possibly more, but they also share your weaknesses. Triumph is held behind your understanding of what a player can do. There can be no better opponent. As you engage, you will find your style superior or inferior to their own. You will gain insight into where you differ and why, and you will find your methods valid or invalid, emerging as victor or falling as victim. The scenario I describe is absent in Elden Ring for one specific reason. There are no solo host invasions. To be invaded in Elden Ring, you must perform either of two actions, participating in cooperative multiplayer or activating the Taunter's Tongue. There is no other method to engage with invasions, removing any nuance to such an event. So is this an issue? In Dark Souls, invasions were a mechanic that offset the benefits of restoring your humanity with the danger of being attacked. They served an important lore function by associating humanity with value, framing it as something that can be stolen and desired by others. Humanity was also associated with power. It served as not only the single most effective skincare routine, but as a way to call out for aid from other worlds. The trade-off was that it called out to all worlds, not just the ones we like. In that way, humanity acts as the tie that binds us to our fellows, for better or worse. The mechanics of humanity, and later embers, would change in the sequels, but the concept remained. That is, until Elden Ring. Elden Ring divorced the concept of a powerful item luring an invader. Instead, only the presence of a cooperator or an outright taunt can beckon such opposition. This implies to me that, beyond any lore purpose, invaders are meant as a balancing act. Instead of hunting players for something they have, they exist solely to counterbalance the benefits of cooperation. I want to say, this is not a bad idea. It makes a lot of mechanical sense. If the game is balanced around the presumption of a single player, adding more will inherently alter that balance in a way for which simple stat adjustments are unlikely to compensate. Having the threat of an opposing player in the form of an invader allows the balance to play out a lot more contextually. Maybe it makes it only marginally harder. Maybe it makes it impossible. There's a randomness that comes with multiplayer on both sides that is rarely consistent, but helps to keep a game interesting. Beyond the mechanical, invasions have changed their meaning. It's not about the host tapping into some world-specific power and luring opposition, rather it's about the host opting to change the rules of engagement. Take, for example, some of the features Elden Ring added for its players. Spirit Ashes are powerful summons that fill the role of an additional player, but offset their rigid system AI with higher health. These Ashes are not available in online multiplayer, save for an explicit Colosseum mode. Another feature is Torrent, 
your spirit mount who can ride and jump past any obstacle in the overworld. Torrent is also disabled in multiplayer, meaning if you want to go quickly, go alone. The fact that these two prominent features of the game are disabled in multiplayer speaks to the design philosophy of Elden Ring. It is intended as a primarily single-player experience. This shouldn't be groundbreaking news to most players. Most of the game stands as an outright obstacle to multiplayer. Level ranges are hidden, cooperators are banished after defeating a boss. To even summon a cooperator, you need a crafted consumable. Not a rare one, either, just an item you must craft to let you see signs. Nearly every aspect of the design is engineered, carefully or otherwise, for single player. By stepping outside of this design consideration with multiplayer, FromSoft is signaling that the rules have changed. It is no longer your world. This is as good a time as any to address a divide within the player base. Those who enjoy invasions, and those who do not. For those in the former, the restrictions placed on invasions in Elden Ring are a nuisance at best and a death blow at worst. They do nothing to encourage use of the system for either participant. In a lot of ways, the fact that invasions even remain in the game seems like a result of the pre-existing framework rather than a conscious choice on the part of the developer. The lore is scaled back, the rewards menial, and covenants are non-existent. Add to it all the reality of constantly facing multiple opponents, and invaders have it rough. The inclusion of solo host invasions would go a long way in restoring invaders as ambassadors of fear. But in Elden Ring, the most power fantasy of Souls games, that doesn't exactly fit into the host protagonist narrative. The game encourages them to become as strong as possible while fighting an exploitable AI. The moment another player with a PvP-focused build can challenge them 1v1, suddenly they aren't so special. Many players loved this about invasions in previous games. I know I did, though not at first. It was only through improvement and experimentation that I became comfortable enough as a player to embrace being invaded. And, looking back, I like that I feared them for so long. That sense of dread that made me think twice before restoring my humanity or going it alone was exactly the atmosphere I wanted in a game. But that's not true of everyone. As for those host players who do not enjoy invasions, they fall into two camps. Those who play solo, and those who play co-op. For solo players, the change is likely small. They already had options to avoid invasions in all previous titles, including, but not limited to, simply playing offline, so the idea that they needed protection from invasions seems inaccurate. Instead, I think From Software wanted to protect the experience. Invasions are disruptive. There's no two ways around that. Another player entering your game with the express purpose of defeating you can't really be anything else. Or, at least, shouldn't be assumed as such. So when we consider that disruption, we should look at what exactly is being disrupted. When invaded in a Souls game, you have several choices. You can try to progress and hope you can reach a fog gate before the invader catches you. You can confront the invader by waiting or seeking them out. You can retreat to your last checkpoint to pad the consequences of losing. Or you can forcibly disconnect your session. All of these choices have an impact on the flow of progress. It is your pace that is fundamentally altered when an invasion occurs. For a game like Elden Ring, which I would argue is heavily centered around overworld exploration, invasions don't exactly fit the theme. In a legacy dungeon, where the map and fast travel are largely irrelevant, and where mounted travel is expressly forbidden, invasions make more sense. But even that assumes the dungeons are built to accommodate that sort of friction. Dark Souls made a constant effort to kill you repeatedly in order to make you comfortable with the idea of trying again. Elden Ring tries to minimize this friction. Stakes of Merica and Frequent Graces make sure you're never too far from your objective, which feels more essential given the time required to progress. I can say confidently I have never worried about having enough healing on my way to a boss fight, and have never felt relief finding a grace. I've only ever felt annoyed when I didn't find one after wandering for too long. 
So for From to allow an invader to disrupt that flow without giving the host a serious advantage, they'd have to trust their players to want to keep going no matter what. I don't know about you, but even as a solo player, the game takes way too long for me to want to engage with anything even remotely optional. There's too many chores, too much travel, too much stopping me from embracing further impedance. And the open world is the biggest offender. It's empty, slow, and tedious to fight through. Rather than playing through a level, it feels more like sifting through a menu, searching for points of interest. For anyone who desires cooperation enough to forego mounted travel, it grinds the gameplay to a pace the developers seem to not have considered. It's almost as if they thought, hey, why not, when choosing to allow players to cooperate in the overworld. But because it only damages the experience as much as the host allows it to, it's inherently less risky for player retention. And to that point, there is another group we've yet to consider, solo hosts who like invasions. For them, their only option is to manually toggle the taunter's tongue on, wait for an invasion, and then toggle it off to avoid constant or overlapping invasions. Frankly, this sucks. Not only because the taunter's tongue is a worst case scenario of every function of the item, but because players shouldn't need to toggle on apprehension. That's not how apprehension works. But invasions in Elden Ring are not a product of apprehension. They're a consequence of changing the rules. By summoning a cooperator, you change the very essence of the game. For the same reason you cannot use your horse, you cannot exist unopposed. You have signaled that time is not your primary concern, and the game will oblige you but not always in a way you'd prefer. This is the design of Elden Ring at its most divided. You either go it alone, or you fuck around and find out. It's that simple. The game could consider activating a Ruin Arc as a trigger for invasion, but that would take away from the ethos of the design. By tying power to risk, it limits player freedom. It could let players opt in or out via a less obtuse toggle, but that's the sort of decision a developer makes when they're not trying to maintain the immersive illusion of the gameplay. From Software, despite any of their faults, wants you to believe in their worlds. They set a standard and expect players to adhere to it within the confines of what is made available. It's part of what makes them a great developer, and I empathize with their reasoning. Sure, the toggle could be a covenant or some other in-game item, and realistically, it wouldn't need to change the design. They could just do it under the same assumptions as the Taunter's Tongue, but I get the distinct impression that From Software only included the Tongue as a stopgap to address any number of system exclusions they felt were not central to the design. The fact that invasions and multiplayer suffer is a consequence of focus, not incompetence. If they wanted players to be invaded at any time or under more common conditions, they'd have to factor in the horse. And because so much of the game occurs in the overworld, they had to make a choice. I want to quickly say that while I cannot be certain, having a mount feels like the sort of decision that occurred in isolation from the rest of the game's development. A way to move players from point to point as the scope increased. It was never factored into multiplayer, not because it wouldn't work, but because the overworld is meant to be a transition, not an obstacle. And we should remember that the design of open world to Legacy Dungeon isn't exactly graceful. I've never been under the impression that there was any lore reason you can't use Torrent inside a castle, but I suspect it was a mechanic's first sort of decision. The freedom of mounted travel doesn't mesh with their Legacy Dungeon design. So the game could only flag you for invasions while in an area where Torrent isn't available, but that would mean elevating multiplayer beyond a purely optional mechanic. It would be asking players to temper their choices in a way that Elden Ring's philosophy of freedom does not embrace. No, instead I think invasions are a conflicted addition. A great idea with strong themes and staying power, but difficult to implement when your goal is to encourage exploration above all else. Having them only function through opt-in multiplayer is a shorthand solution that gives every player a half-and-half -half pizza, where you can have whatever you want on one half and whatever you don't on the other. Adding them into solo play, however restricted, wouldn't change the underlying issue. 
multiplayer is not part of the design. It's a different game. So if I'm trying to answer the question of why there aren't solo host invasions, that's where I'm at. As much as it could work, as much as I want it to be there, it's just not that sort of game. The dungeons aren't meant to create tension, and the world is too big. It's more important to the developers that you maintain freedom as a player than worry about each step. It's just the nature of a game with so many steps to take. That's all for this one. As much as I'd love to see invasions take on a greater role, solo host invasions are low on my list because they weren't embraced in the core design, and so many other things need to change first. Very little of Elden Ring was meant for multiplayer, leaving me both grateful and resentful for its inclusion. As much as I want a more interwoven experience, I'm fine with having it be its own separate content so long as it's consistently engaging and replayable. After all, it should be different from the main game. If you have any thoughts on Solo Invasions or Elden Ring's multiplayer more broadly, please leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. I post new content like this every week and occasionally stream. And if you're interested in supporting me financially, I have a link for donations in the video description. It really means a lot to be a part of this community, and any support goes a long way in helping to grow my audience. Until next time, thank you for watching.